I've learned not to panic in this hobby because panic can lead to rash decisions and rash decisions can lead to disaster. The 40 gallon breeder behind me has had dino flagellates for several months now, but I think we're finally nearing the end game. How did we get to the point where dinos are in the frag tank? Well, we gotta go way back in time to when I had my 120 gallon. Due to my own laziness, the 120 gallon had a terrible green hair algae problem. I couldn't get rid of it, so in steps Brightwell's razor. Work like a charm, green hair algae disappeared after a couple weeks of manual removal, but then I had a cyano outbreak. I increased the flow, tried manual removal, but I couldn't get the cyano to disappear, so in comes ChemiClean. Of course, worked absolutely fantastic, but over time, the green hair algae just came back. So now we're in round number two. Razor again, worked like a charm, but this time, instead of cyano coming after that, I had dinoflagellates come back. Dinoflagellates are so much more difficult to get rid of than cyano. Around the same time, I was completely sick of my 120 gallon system for a whole bunch of reasons. So I broke it down and I got rid of it. But I had a really good refugium that I didn't want to get rid of. So what I did is I moved my macroalgae, I moved my miracle mud, I moved all the pods from the 120 gallon system and created a new refugium in the 40 gallon frag tank. Knowing full well that that meant the dinos and the cyano were coming along with it. The dinoflagellates have not been nearly as bad over here because I've been testing it all the time, but they've still been persisting and they've been persisting for several reasons. Number one, I've been over filtering. I've been changing out my filter sock too much and for a while I was running my protein skimmer 24 seven and the skim mate was super wet. So I was pulling out way too much from the system. Number two is I wasn't feeding enough. Since I was over filtering, I had to up my feeding and I'm always so worried about nuisance algae that I was feeding super lightly. And then number three was there just wasn't enough beneficial bacteria. Because it's a pseudo quarantine system, the only biological filtration I have is in the sump where I have ceramic media. And I wasn't dosing a Microbacter 7 or a Dr. Tim's Waste Away or any other beneficial bacteria. And as those beneficial bacteria numbers dwindled, it allowed the dino to take off. And lastly, I have these Chinese black box light and I just have no idea how much par they're putting out and what exactly the wavelengths are. So it could also be contributing to a highly photosynthetic dino outbreak. So in summary, how did we get to this dino flagellate outbreak? Too much filtration, not enough feeding, too much light and not enough beneficial bacteria. I have a core belief. I have a core belief when it comes to dinos and this is anecdotal. So I'm open to being wrong. But before I tell you my core belief, I need to give you a little bit of background. There are over 2000 species of dino flagellates. Dino flagellates are single celled eukaryotes and they're usually classified as algae. On a really cool side, dino flagellates are responsible for a lot of the bioluminescence you see at nighttime in the ocean. I remember learning to scuba dive in Puget Sound and jumping into the sound at nighttime and having my whole body outlined by bioluminescence. It's it's really quite magical. But on the other side, dinoflagellates can accumulate rapidly in the ocean and they can discolor the water, this red color, causing what we know as a red tide. And for those of you that live near the ocean, you know this. During a red tide and shortly after a red tide, you can't consume shellfish because you could get shellfish poisoning and die. No joke. All of this is to just tell you my core belief. And my core belief is this. I believe every single saltwater aquarium has dino flagellates in it. I don't think you can have a saltwater aquarium without dinos. But just like when the ocean is in harmony, when your tank is in harmony, dinos are an issue. So for me, it's not about keeping dino flagellates out of your saltwater aquarium. It's about keeping your tank in overall harmony so dinos aren't an issue. This is my first time installing a UV sterilizer. And the reason I haven't done it in the past is because it's expensive. To get all the gear you need to install on a tank that has about 60 gallons of total water volume, you're looking at about $300. But a UV sterilizer has really been shown to be effective against free floating parasites, organisms, 
algaes, and bacteria, and of course, it's well known to be a great tool fighting against dinoflagellates. My plan is to disturb the dinoflagellates every single night, allowing them to pass through the UV sterilizer, and then I'm gonna change out my filter sock every morning, removing even more of those dinos. For now, I'm only gonna run the UV sterilizer at night. I'm just a little bit paranoid about over-filtering things. I can always increase the amount I'm filtering it, and I'm just gonna use one of these really cheap and expensive Wi-Fi outlets to put it on a timer. Oh, and by the way, everything I'm about to show you, there'll be links to it in the description below. So how does a UV sterilizer even work? Well, basically how it works is water passes through the UV sterilizer, which has a UV light source inside. UV light damages the DNA of parasites, of algae, of bacteria, and of organisms so that they can't reproduce. So why the UV light doesn't necessarily kill those things, it makes it so they can't reproduce. So in the long run, it will reduce their populations. But the trick with UV sterilizers is you have to get the right size pump. Because if you have too little flow going through the UV sterilizer, then you're not pushing your entire water column through there enough to interact with UV light. But if you get a pump that's too powerful, you're gonna push water through the UV sterilizer so fast that the UV light is not gonna have a chance to damage the DNA. So if you wanna set up your own UV sterilizer, there's a few things you're gonna to need to buy. The first thing you're gonna to need to buy is obviously the UV sterilizer. Just read the description so that you get the right size. Do make sure that you don't get a wiper though because the wiper is meant for fresh water systems. In a salt water system, the wiper will corrode. So now that you have your UV sterilizer, you need to get a pump. You gotta make sure the pump is rated for the correct gallon. So for this UV sterilizer, I needed a pump that was about 250 gallons per hour. So this CJ Synchro Silent is 251. Then you gotta make sure you buy the right size flexible tubing that can attach both to your pump and the UV sterilizer. And the last thing you need is just the right size plastic hose clamp. Please, please, please be safe with your UV light. UV light is dangerous to human beings. Never ever turn on your UV sterilizer with the bulb exposed because it can damage your skin and your eyes and your organs. So the only time you should ever turn your UV sterilizer on is when it's properly sealed within the PVC housing compartment. All right, let's go get ours installed.
visors installed. So here's my plan of action. Number one, I need to test my nitrates and my phosphates daily to make sure they stay above zero. Next, I'm going to increase my nutrient levels, primarily my nitrates and my phosphates. I'm gonna do that through feeding a little bit more and filtering a little bit less. Since I am gonna be running a filter sock during this time, I'm just not gonna run my protein skimmer 24 hours a day. I'll probably cut it back to 12 hours per day. If you're doing this at home as well, be sure that you're not running any GFO during this time because you want your phosphate levels to go up. And if you're doing any sort of carbon dosing or bio pellet reactors, stop that as well. And if you don't wanna feed more, you can buy products that are NO3 or PO4 and just dose them directly to the tank. Every single day, I'm gonna manually remove as many dynos as I can see. And every evening, I'm gonna disturb the dynos so that they get up into the water column so they can pass through the UV sterilizer. Every single morning, I'm gonna remove a filter sock and replace it so I can pull out as many dynos as I disturbed the night before. Then every single day, I'm going to add back in beneficial bacteria. For me, I'm gonna use my Microbacter 7 from Brightwell, and I'm also gonna use Dr. Tim's Waste Away, but you could also add a Vibrant into the mix as well. I'm not gonna add all of these at the same day, I'm just gonna rotate. One day Microbacter 7, the next day Dr. Tim's Waste Away. Since the dinoflagellates we usually see in the saltwater aquarium hobby are photosynthetic, I'm also going to reduce the total photo period of my lights and decrease their intensity. So right now I have these set at 75%, I'm gonna reduce it to below 50%, and instead of running these lights eight hours a day, I'm gonna run these lights six hours a day. I'm gonna run the UV sterilizer 12 hours every single night, and if I need to increase that to 24 hours, I will. I'm gonna do all these things every single day, and this isn't gonna disappear in a week. So for those of you beginners out there, once you get dinos, dinos can take months to disappear. So if you want a quick fix, you're just out of luck. You're gonna have to be vigilant and spend time getting rid of these dinos. If this still doesn't work after a couple months, what else can I do? I could try a three day total blackout, which will hopefully give those dinos a setback. I've done it before, hasn't really worked for me. And I can also do hydrogen peroxide dosing, which I've also done before, but that can have negative side effects for your corals. And since I have corals in here, I really wanna stay away from that. The last step in my dino flagellate battle plan is don't give up until I win. You have to be persistent against dinos. Don't let the dinos Dinos win, have a plan, do it every single day, and you will come out victorious. To read more about my Dino Flagellate battle plan, either click here or click the link below that says how to get rid of Dino Flagellates. Links to all the products we talked about are, of course, in the description below. And if you could be so kind and consider subscribing to My First Fish Tank and Marine Depot, we would really appreciate it. Until next time, happy reefing, everybody.